Hello everyone, Wayne from the CERN Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of the constellations in our nighttime sky. So one you can see right behind me, and that is Capricornus the Sea Goat. It's a rather strange creature, uh, but it's a pretty recognizable shape in our nighttime skies. And there are some interesting things that we can find in that with use of a good telescope or even a set of binoculars. Uh, so let's go through some of those interesting things that we can find in Capricornus by loading up our Sky Simulator software and taking a look. So here we are, standing in front of the Cernan Earth and Space Center building on the campus of Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. We have our date set for August the 27th, and our time is set for right around 10 o'clock at night, a couple hours after the sun sets. The best time to go out and take a look at the sky because it's nice and dark, and that's when you'll be able to start to see all the cool things out there. Uh, we're looking for the area of the sky known as Capricornus. Now, here around the city of Chicago, it isn't terribly bright. You can spot it, but it can be kind of difficult. If we turn from the west to face towards the southeast, then we're looking kind of right at it, actually, in between the south southeast and it's hard to see any of the stars in Capricornus, but there are a couple of objects that can help us. And that's one of the reasons we're looking at this area of the sky today. And that is because we have two of our planets are visible within this one area of the sky. If I turn on the labels, we'll see we have both Saturn and Jupiter. Jupiter will be much brighter than Saturn, but you can see them both using just your eyes. If I bring on the constellation line here, we'll see the stars aren't terribly bright, but both of those planets are right within that group of stars. If I turn on the boundary lines for our official constellation, we'll see that they do fit within. And those are both great objects to take a look at with a telescope. Uh, with Jupiter, we can zoom in and take a closer look at that. So with Jupiter, you'll be able to see the beautiful planet. You'll be able to see a couple of the moons around it. If your telescope is good enough, you might be able to see the clouded band structure of their clouds in Jupiter. And so it is quite an amazing sight. And depending on where it's at, in their, where they're at in its their orbits, uh, you could see two, it looks like right now, but up to four of its moons through a halfway decent telescope. Now Saturn, everyone knows Saturn. It is quite an amazing sight. If we just scroll over here, we'll see if we look at that one through a telescope, we might be able to see a couple of its moons as well, but we'll definitely be able to see those beautiful rings that go around the planet. If you have a good telescope, you can get views kind of like this one where you can actually see some pretty good definition on those rings. If you're just using a set of binoculars or a not so great telescope, you can still look at Saturn. Um, it'll look maybe a little bit more like this, where it seems to have just a bit of a bulge sticking out of the sides, almost looks like it has ears on that orb. And that's some, what some of the first pictures of Saturn, the first drawings that people like Galileo took as they looked at it through the early telescopes. They saw the ears on that planet, which we now know as its rings. As far as other deep sky objects, well, there are some things that we can find in Capricornus. It's not a terribly active portion of the sky. Um, with all of our light pollution here around Chicago, it is difficult to see any of those. So you'll want to find some dark sky areas to see them for yourself. But here in our program, well, we can just turn off our atmosphere. And now we can see a little bit more. We see Jupiter and Saturn a little bit easier. And if I turn on our deep sky object markers, we'll see there's really only one major object within the area of Capricornus. It's um, called the Jellyfish Cluster, also known as M30, Messier 30. And it is a globular cluster. And what those are is these are collections of hundreds of thousands to millions of stars that are way out on the very far edges of our galaxy. They're some of the oldest objects within our galaxy. Some of the oldest stars are within these globular clusters. They form nice big spherical globules, and that's where they get their name of all these stars sort of gravitationally bound to one another. And so we see the jellyfish cluster here. Uh, you would need a pretty decent telescope to be able to see that, but you can find it within the constellation of Capricornus. Uh, there's one more object that's not quite in Capricornus that I want to show you. It is right here just above Capricornus, and that is the Saturn Nebula. So you can use Capricornus to find it. Just find sort of the area right between Jupiter and Saturn, and then look a little bit higher in the sky. 
and then you can point your telescope towards this, and it's a very interesting looking nebula. It's a supernova remnant. Uh, we can, it's an explosion of a star. We can see it here. It kind of looks a little bit like the planet Saturn, which is how it gets its name. Some of the uh, debris from that explosion has gone out in sort of the way the plane is facing us. It makes it look like it has rings just like the planet Saturn does. So it is a rather interesting object if you can get a good look at it. Again, it will be very difficult to see that without a very powerful telescope, and you will want to find some very dark sky areas to be able to find this stuff. Uh, finding it here in the city is rather difficult. It can be done. Um, but it is a lot of work. You have to know exactly where you're pointing your telescope, and you have to let it sort of gather information for a little while if you're trying to get pictures of this stuff. But that is everything that you should be able to find inside the constellation or nearby the constellation of Capricornus, the sea goat. Well, thank you everyone for learning about Capricornus and what you can find in that area of the sky with me today. Again, my name is Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center. I hope you all enjoyed the video and remember to get out there and take a look at your nighttime skies.